Hi, I'm Barb Dean. I'm a women's health nurse practitioner, and this is your daily dose of pregnancy information. Let's talk about pregnancy dating. What is that? Well, a pregnancy is 40 menstrual weeks. I know you thought it was nine months, right? But a pregnancy is calculated from the first day of the last period to the time a woman delivers. And most women will deliver at about 40 weeks from the first day of their period. And this is a worldwide standard. So no matter where you live, this is how we all calculate pregnancies. Now, before you were able to go online with a pregnancy calculator, we use these cool wheels. And we plot on this wheel the first day of the period, and then it gives us what's called the EDD, or the estimated date of delivery. And why is that important? Well, it's really, really important because as a woman gets further and further along, we want to track the growth of her tummy and make sure it matches up for where it should be. We want to make sure that um, when, if she goes into labor, if she's having contractions, are those premature contractions or are they right on time? And it's also important toward the end of pregnancy because we know that babies who are born between 40 and 41 and a half weeks from the uh, first day of the period, they typically are healthier. But once we get past 41 and a half to 42 or even 43 weeks, the risks to the baby go up. And it's important for us to know what kind of other tests we need to do to protect the health of mom and baby. So when you go in uh, for your very first OB appointment or your first prenatal appointment, your provider may have an ultrasound like this in their office and they may do the first ultrasound. I know that's what I do when my patients come in. Um, and what I'm doing is looking to see what the crown rump length is and if it matches up with the number of weeks since the last period. Now, if it doesn't match up, um, what we do is do another ultrasound to check the baby's growth and we probably are going to adjust the due date. So what about the accuracy of ultrasounds? If someone comes in and they're within eight weeks of that uh, last menstrual period, then the accuracy, depending on the person, is about three to five days, plus or minus. So that really gives us a good idea if the dates match up with the mom's period and we can then give her um, the due date with a lot of confidence. If a mom comes in within the first 12 weeks of her period, then our accuracy is plus or minus seven days or about a week. Because you know, babies are gonna grow at their own rate. They're genetically different, right? So they're gonna grow based on their mom's size, their dad's size, and their own growth pattern. If a mom has her very first ultrasound in her second trimester, that is from 12 weeks to 28 weeks, the accuracy drops to plus or minus two weeks. And by the third trimester, because there's so much different variation in baby sizes, the accuracy is plus or minus three weeks. So that's why it's important if you have a positive pregnancy test, call your OB provider or find an OB provider and make that appointment so that you can be seen within the first 12 weeks. And what, what might you expect? Well, a lot of times I'm able to see very early pregnancies through the abdomen. We don't have to do what's called a transvaginal ultrasound. We don't have to put the ultrasound uh, wand into the vagina. We can look through the abdomen. And ultrasound machines have changed a lot in the last few years, so we can magnify the image and I can even hear a baby's heartbeat. We use what's called a Doppler to do that. I can hear the heartbeat as early as seven weeks. Some of my colleagues can hear it as early as six to six and a half weeks. When we're doing an ultrasound in that first trimester, we wanna make sure that the pregnancy is in the uterus. So, um, and we also wanna make sure that it's growing properly, that we can see a very, very rapidly beating heart babies have much higher heart rates than uh, children or adults. I always think about it like a hummingbird. They have very, very rapid heartbeats. So a baby who's growing in the first, second, and third trimester, their heart rate may be between 120 beats per minute 
to about 160 beats per minute. And you can see that on the ultrasound. You can see the little flickering heart. And of course, we can hear it using the Doppler. The other thing that we look at are, are their arms and legs. We call those limb buds. And we're counting to make sure everything is there. And we're looking at the umbilical cord. We're also looking at where the placenta is. And the placenta is what's attached to the mom. It provides all the nourishment through the umbilical cord to get to the baby. We wanna see, well, where is that located? We wanna make sure it's kinda of like Goldilocks. We wanna make sure it's just right, that it's not over the cervix, um, which is the opening to the uterus. Um, that's called placenta previa. So we're, lo we're looking at that as well. Another thing you might see if you're looking at the ultrasound with your provider is you might see this little round circle and that's the yolk sac. Um, until the placenta takes over, there is actually a little yolk sac that provides a lot of nourishment to the baby. And eventually over time, that just gets smaller and smaller and then regresses. We are also looking at the amount of amniotic fluid to make sure there's plenty so the baby can kind of swim around. And so it can provide a lot of cushioning for the cord. So in the first trimester, I measure the crown rump length, that's from the top of the head to their bottom or their rump. And then uh, this ultrasound machine and all ultrasound machines will help calculate and tell us whether, you know, how many weeks that is corresponding to. And that way we can um, accurately predict um, a due date, of course, plus or minus a few days. Now by the second trimester, when we do an ultrasound, Usually this is done between 16 and 18 weeks of pregnancy. Boy, there's so much more that we can see. We can see the facial features. We can look to see if there's an issue with a cleft uh, lip or cleft palate. We can count the chambers of the heart. We look at the stomach bubble, look at the kidneys, um, look at the spinal column. Um, and we measure the femur length. That's the long bone between the uh, the knee and the hip. We measure the head size, what's called a biparietal diameter, and then the head circumference and also the abdominal circumference of the baby. And again, we're looking at the placenta, the amount of fluid, and we're counting the number of vessels in the umbilical cord. So we want to see three vessels there. Um, the nice thing about doing this second trimester ultrasound at about 16 to 18 weeks is that it's very reassuring for parents to know that everything seems to be okay with their baby. Now, these ultrasounds are very accurate, but they're not able to detect every possible issue. That's why we have other blood tests that we do and other testing that's done in pregnancy. Now, by the third trimester, your provider may ask to do another ultrasound to make sure they know which position the baby's in for delivery. And that's something that's standard in our office. So even though we're using our hands to feel if the baby's head's down, we also use an ultrasound to, to be sure 100% that that head is in the right position for delivery. But at the same time, we're also looking at the amount of amniotic fluid because the amniotic fluid cushions the cord so that when the mom has a contraction, it's not pushing on that umbilical cord, restricting the blood flow. So we do what's called an AFI or amniotic fluid index. And that way we can tell if there's plenty of fluid for the baby. Now, if there's too much fluid, that's an indicator that a mom may have diabetes. If there's not enough fluid, we may ask that mom to be on bed rest. And we may ask her to come in for more testing like non-stress tests, more ultrasounds, and something known as a biophysical profile where we're looking at the baby's breathing movements, the amount of fluid, and um, finding out whether or not, and, and also using a non-stress test so we can predict if the baby's going to do well for the next few days before perhaps another round of tests or maybe um, thinking about delivery. So I know this is a lot of information on pregnancy, dating, and ultrasounds. I sure hope it helps. I know when you're pregnant, it's such a vulnerable time, and the more information you get, the better. I hope this has been reassuring. So if you like these videos, please press subscribe.
You can also go to my website, nursebarb.com, for more information. I also wrote a book called Nurse Barb's Personal Guide to Pregnancy, and I have a guide to breastfeeding as well. I hope this helps. I hope you have a happy, healthy pregnancy and a safe delivery. And as always, I'll see you next time. Take care and be well.